So the subconvexity problem. Uh, okay, so that is subconvexity. So, uh, and uh, to answer this, I just uh, need to uh, recall you what is an L function. So, uh, an L function is, uh, in the most naive sense, it's a Dirichlet series, so it's a function of a complex variable s. Which, uh, in addition to be a, a Dirichlet series, happens to be factored as an Euler product over the primes. And uh, these uh, 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 terms are called the, the local factor at uh, a given prime p. And this uh, local factor is uh, the inverse of a polynomial in uh, p minus s. Okay, and um, okay, and so and so this is a local factor, and uh, this is the inverse of, po of a polynomial of a degree which is bounded by a, a, an integer uh, which uh, depends on pi, which is called the degree uh, of the L function, and for uh, all but fi finitely many primes, uh, the degree is exactly this, this d. And, uh, uh, okay, so this uh, is kind of a formal uh, uh, factorization, but usually you, what you know when you have an L function uh, coming from nature is that these uh, uh, coefficients, so the roots of uh, your polynomial. So these roots are called the local parameter of uh, this object pi, the local parameter at, at the prime p. And uh, these uh, local parameters, they are often bounded by, or you usually know, but they are bounded by uh, some uh, power of of the prime, and so because of this, you you know that this uh, uh, series is, uh, and this uh, factorization is uh, absolutely uh, converging for uh, real part of S uh, sufficiently large. Okay. So, um, and uh, you know, and the most uh, basic uh, example is uh, that of the Riemann zeta function. Which is of degree one. And, uh, but you have, um, uh, you know, more example. You have also the Dirichlet series associated to uh, Dirichlet character. So a character of this uh, group of uh, of uh, invertible element of the of the modular ring of modulus q, 
Uh, and uh, so then you, which is, so which is also of degree one, then you have the, uh, the Asseveil L function of uh, modular form. which is of degree two. Where uh, F is a modular form, say if it is uh, holomorphic, uh, and cuspidal. of weight k, I don't know, of weight k and, and level q. Okay, and um, Okay, and uh, uh, so again, uh, usually one, uh, one knows, and uh, often it's really non-trivial, but admits uh, analytic continuation To, uh, to the, the complex uh, plane, possibly with, uh, with poles and with a functional equation. So, and uh, this uh, functional equation requires a uh, 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 to, so to describe it, it requires to, to add uh, uh, together with uh, this local factor at the prime, uh, a local factor at uh, infinity. So, uh, so this needs infinity. So. which is uh, again uh, a product of uh, a d term where d is this uh, same degree of uh, gamma uh, functions okay uh, where uh, <coughs> where uh, gamma r of s is pi minus s, gamma of s over two. And, uh, and uh, then uh, the, so then up to uh, an additive shift of, uh, of the S variable, you can, uh, one can put the, the, the functional equation into uh, the following shape. Uh, where um, uh, okay. well, maybe I, I could write it 
maybe in general. Yeah, where? So epsilon pine is a complex number of uh, modulus one, and it's called the root number. Uh, okay, so oh, at least that way. And, uh, and uh, this uh, lambda uh, pi of S is uh, Q pi over two the, uh, times. So the product of, of uh, the product of all local factors at the primes, finite primes p, and of the local factor at infinity, and uh, uh, q pi is uh, an integer, and uh, sometimes it's called the, the conductor or the maybe arithmetic conductor. Of pi. Okay, and uh, so you have uh, this kind of functional equation. So here uh, it simply means that the Dirichlet series which is involved uh, is the one where you take the complex conjugate of your uh, coefficients uh, on the lambda pi of n. And, uh, uh, and uh, so you have this, and with and uh, so it gives you uh, analytic continuation over uh, over c and we with uh, uh, finite usually with uh, uh, possibly some uh, poles with uh, possible poles located at uh, uh, real part of S equal real part of S. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, maybe something like this. Okay, for the L function and uh, otherwise. Uh, uh. So um, and. Usually, uh, usually, or okay, uh, analytic number theorist theorist normalize the uh, lambda pi of n so that uh, this uh, complex number s0 is, uh, is uh, 1. But uh, if you do arithmetic geometry, you, you, so your uh, s0 would be half an, uh, half an integer. But for us, so I will, uh, all the L function will have uh, will have a, a, a functional equation with 1 minus s or 1 minus s bar. Okay. But it's just up to an additive shift. Okay. Good. Okay, and so you see, uh, for instance, uh, in the case of my uh, modular form of weight k, I've, uh, I've uh, normalized my uh, Fourier coefficient by this factor uh, n to the k minus one over two, and uh, the intent is exactly to make the, the, the S zero to be equal to one in, uh, instead to have a k. Okay, so uh, 
Yeah, so maybe I can just give a few uh, more examples because here we were uh, in degree one uh, and two, and uh, of course there are uh, L functions of uh, higher degree. And uh, so, uh, in, the, in the classical setting, you have the rankin selberg L function. Uh, of, uh, associated to a pair of modular form, and, and then the degree is, uh, is two, two times two. Uh, but uh, uh, then you have uh, the standard So, Godman Jacquet uh, L function associated to an automorphic representation. Uh, of so gl d of the adele so now it's, it starts to get more uh, sophisticated and it's uh, and then the degree is uh, is d and uh, even you have uh, uh, rankin selberg And you have also the rankin selberg L function associated to, uh, to pairs of uh, automorphic representation of uh, Of, uh, uh, so a pair of uh, automorphic representation and of degree d times d primes, and uh, but you have a lot also of uh, of uh, of Dirichlet series that you would very much like to call uh, L function in this sense or to recognize as a, say. Uh, automorphic L, pro, uh, L function of, uh, uh, as a standard L function or as a product of standard L function and, uh, and uh, even so proving that these natural uh, uh, L series are uh, of that shape, it's, uh, it's, uh, 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 it's own game and it's, uh, for instance, a field of uh, modularity, but here we will uh, work really in, a, 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 in the context of analytic number theory. So, uh, and uh, what I will say may, uh, may uh, apply to say motivic L function as, uh, as long as one can show uh, that they are automorphic and uh, this is really non-trivial. Okay, uh, so so now suppose we have are in this situation. So the 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 question we are interested in is what is the size of. Uh, L pi of S when when S uh, is uh, on the on the vertical line which is uh, invariant under the functional equation. So if I take an S zero equal one, it's the vertical line uh, real part of S equal one half, and uh, in uh, so from the analytic viewpoint, uh, this is the most uh, mysterious uh, uh, 
so probably the most mysterious region uh, when you want to study this L function from the analytic viewpoint because this is uh, the, the vertical line which is uh, further away from the from the from the half plane where you know that your L function is absolutely uh, converging. So. Uh, Okay, so just I uh, draw a picture. So you have here one, uh, maybe I will draw this picture here because I will use it often. So put my one half. So usually, as I said, you know that your L function is absolutely converging in, in, some, uh, in some half plane, just because uh, you have this, uh, this, uh, upper, this polynomial bound for the local parameters. And uh, so, and there uh, you control uh, everything due to, uh, because it's uh, something which is absolutely converging. And for some mysterious uh, reason, you, you can, uh, you have uh, analytic continuation uh, everywhere. And uh, in particular, you, you control everything uh, very well uh, in a, a symmetric half plane. And then you have uh, the, the zone where you know of the existence of your L function only through the, uh, the knowledge of the functional equation. Okay. So, and then you have this line, which is really in the middle of, uh, of nowhere. And so that's, uh, it's uh, so natural to look at, uh, at, this, uh, at this, in this range. Okay, so um, um, okay, uh, maybe I can make a, a remark, and I will do it often. Uh, uh, even it suffices, kind of, to ask. Uh, the question at, or it may suffice, it depends on your state, at, uh, at really the central point one half at here. Uh, what uh, you can uh, just do is uh, you can write that if you are interested at another point and it can be a le legitimate interest, then you would. Uh, uh, cheat a little bit and, and, and uh, uh, define uh, where you introduce this uh, L function. And for, for now, it's just an, a notation. Uh, So you, even you may just pick up one half if you want to fix ID of to not to introduce a new variable, just because you can uh, just replace, uh, make this shift by a, a purely imaginary number, and then it will uh, it may change the shape of the functional uh, equation, but it will uh, still uh, be s one minus s. Okay, so you can do this. So that's a kind of a trivial uh, remark. But uh, this, uh, so in the context of automorphic uh, forms and automorphic representation, this is a really a natural, uh, uh, a natural operation to make. It's a twist by a, by a character. 
Okay. Uh, so, uh, so now we are interested in, in this size and uh, uh, to measure the size of, uh, of an L function, uh, we introduce uh, a quantity which is called uh, analytic conductor of maybe the pair pi s, but I could specify s uh, to be one half, but I will hide the general uh, definition. So you take the, what I call the arithmetic conductor, and uh, then you take uh, uh, some terms which, uh, which come from the, uh, from the local factor at infinity, Uh, or may, maybe, yeah, um, yeah I, uh. okay, so it, uh, it, in, it kind, kind of, it contained as a numerical data this q pi and uh, information about the local factor and also some information about how high the how uh, high the complex variable is uh, is located so but again we could just look at uh, specialized s to be one half so i will also write q pi well q pi at one half so and then it's it's the product of the parameter at infinity. You just put the plus one to make sure that none of these factors vanish. And then you have this uh, integer q pi. Okay, so this is... Uh, uh, and so once we have introduced uh, this, so what uh, can we say? So I make some assumption. Assume and it's called uh, uh, it's called uh, uh, Ramanujan Peterson. Hypothesis. So I make the assumption that the local parameter are all bounded by one, and that the, the real part of the uh, parameter at infinity are all uh, non-negative. Okay, so you cannot... Uh, so, and in particular, Uh, so, uh, in particular, my uh, Dirichlet series, L pi of S, is absolutely converging for real part of S bigger than 1 plus epsilon for any, for any positive epsilon. And, and then you, you can see that uh, for, uh, and for, again, real part of S bigger than 1 plus epsilon, then your L pi of S is, is bounded uh, by um, uh, is bounded by 1, is absolutely bounded, and the constant depends on epsilon and on uh, on the degree of your L function. Okay, and so, uh, uh, 
Okay, so now I will uh, introduce uh, uh, a function. So uh, let uh, for sigma some real number. I uh, let uh, uh, what name uh, could I? Give to it, okay. Uh, eta sigma be the mean of uh, eta positive such that for uh, real part of S uh, equal sigma, then L pi of S is, is bounded by Q pi uh, IT, Q pi, okay, it's not the S. Um, to the power eta. Okay, and then what I have uh, just uh, said, uh, or maybe uh, uh, what I have just said is that if I uh, assume the Ramanujan, uh, if I make the Ramanujan Peterson uh, assumption, uh, my uh, function uh, eta sigma is, uh, is uh, zero. Uh, for when a real part of S uh, uh, is uh, strictly bigger than one, for sigma is strictly bigger than one. Okay, and now if uh, Ah, okay. let's do this. And now by the functional equation plus uh, the Stirling's formula, on, on the growth of, uh, of uh, gamma factors in, uh, in uh, vertical strips, you have that, uh, that uh, Eta uh, sigma is equal to uh, uh, okay to one half minus sigma for sigma uh, negative maybe in, in so. Maybe I will put a green. So uh, where are we? I am one half. So it is here. And uh, OK. So this is my function eta uh, sigma in the negative half plane. And uh, now you have the uh, convexity principle of fragment linked de Leuf. 
because you also know that uh, your function L and the completed L function is a, a bounded order outside of its poles. So uh, it comes with the functional equation. Uh, then you deduce that your, uh, that, uh, your function for uh, in the middle, so for sigma in uh, 0, 1, uh, uh, you, you, of course, you may have a poles, you remove them, and uh, uh, so, uh, so for, uh, for sigma in, in zero one, then uh, eta, uh, eta sigma is, uh, is uh, okay. I will, it's better if I draw a picture. Is, uh, linear uh, function interpolating oh. uh, zero one half and one zero. Okay. And so then uh, in particular, so from this convexity principle, in particular, on the critical line, uh, your eta sigma is one quarter. And so it says that uh, L for real part of S equal one half, uh, L pi of S uh, is bounded by uh, it may depend on the degree, but by uh, Q pi S to the one quarter plus little o of one when this uh, analytic conductor uh, grows. So either because S grows or because pi grows and, and so on. So, uh, and this is the convexity bound, and it follows from general principle, and we will see also that there are other ways uh, uh, multi, uh, to, to achieve this bound without doing uh, too much, uh, okay, things like, uh, but it's a completely general principle. It does not involve uh, number theory. So, um, okay, uh, what is uh, the, uh, what is the horizon? So, so what is the, the truth? Is that uh, is that in fact this uh, line which has a slope uh, minus one half uh, uh, minus one? Should be uh, should continue. Uh, okay, sorry, my slope is not very good. So should should continue. Here and so and then by still by convexity at one half the eta one half should be zero and then your uh, your function on this uh, half uh, along this uh, uh, vertical strip should really be zero. Eta one half equals zero, and this is called the generalized Lindelof hypothesis. And this is a consequence of the generalized Riemann hypothesis. So it's but they are not, uh, it's not known if they are equivalent. 
in a way we all believe in the Riemann hypothesis. So, okay. So that is uh, the horizon, and uh, but the subconvexity problem asks for something uh, more modest. Is uh, whether uh, So, sorry? Uh, uh, so what I say is that here my function is equal to one half, and here my function is equal to zero, and then uh, the convexity principle of uh, fragment Lindelof tells you that if you look at the growth of your function in this vertical strip, then it should, uh, so if you look at the exponent uh, of your bound uh, when you are in this uh, critical slip, strip, this exponent should, uh, uh, it should be a convex function uh, going through these two, uh, okay, and so then it, it, so it means that this exponent that you get is always uh, uh, upper bounded by this interpolating line. It's okay? It's, it's a, pardon, uh, but I think it's called a principle in a textbook, but it's a theorem. Yeah, it's a convexity. I don't know if it's called a convexity theorem. I always, I learned it as a convexity principle, but it's true. And uh, the other is that Lindelof also is bounded in GRH? No, it's weaker. It's uh, implied by GRH. Yeah. Uh, I cannot say it's strictly weaker because... Uh, uh, if you believe in GRH, uh, but it seems uh, hard. Uh, I don't know how to deduce GRH from GLH. Okay. okay, but this principle is a really general fact about uh, about uh, holomorphic functions, which have. Uh, um, Maybe it suffices to them to have bounded order in vertical strip. I think it's sufficient. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, and so the, the, the subconvexity problem is whether you can beat this uh, convexity upper bound, and it means uh, uh, can, can one take. Uh, eta to the one half to be strictly smaller than one quarter, or can one prove that? Okay, for a given uh, L function or a given uh, class of L functions. And so if you have uh, this, you get, so suppose you are a little bit below one quarter, then you get for free a control of your, uh, a better control of your L function over the full, uh, uh, over this full vertical strip. Okay, by convexity, you can apply it again, and so it improves about, uh, you can be below this. Okay? So that's the subconvexity problem. And, uh, okay, and uh, this subconvexity problem mm, so I cannot do uh, two boards simultaneously. I can only do them one by one. Uh, I was told, maybe I can try, but I don't want to break the system the first day. Okay. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, uh.
So, and uh, just also, you have things, the, you have some aspects, so it's called aspects, I don't know why, but aspects of the subconvexity problem, which, so you may have the look for the, uh, again, you, you want for this kind of uh, uh, uniform bound. Okay, but you can kind of uh, mollify the problem a bit and uh, just, for instance, ask uh, for this bound for uh, uh, certain uh, variation, uh, 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 for different variation of your pair of pi and s, ask for this uh, bound when uh, uh, s go to infinity and uh, pi is uh, fixed, or it means you don't care about uh, what happens when pi vary. So you could ask for L pi of S being bounded by S to the uh, power uh, D uh, over four minus eta time say Q pi at one half to the power uh, 100. So you see, you have a very bad bound when pi uh, is growing, but you have a subconvex bound if you let s go to infinity. So that's uh, one option. You can ask for this bound when the... Uh, so this is called the s aspect. Solve the subconvexity problem in the s aspect. Then you, you have... You can... Uh, uh, look at subconvex bound when the arithmetic conductor grows and, uh, and uh, the rest, S and, uh, say, uh, I will write S and Q infinity are fixed. And again, it means you want a bound which is subconvex in QF, but uh, in terms of the other parameters, you don't really care on the dependency or you admit a very bad uh, bound of that shape. Okay? So it's, uh, it's often called the level aspect or uh, arithmetic conductor aspect. And you can do uh, the same uh, when uh, these uh, uh, Conductor at infinity, which is the product of 1 plus mu uh, pi i. So this thing goes to infinity and s and qf are fixed. So it means that in some cases you may not be able to control efficiently the variation of all the parameters or for some parameters you have a better control than for the other and so on. So, yeah. What, what? Oh, sorry, excuse me. Yeah, Q. I wrote it Q pi and here maybe I should write Q pi infinity. It's 100. Uh, oh. I can add uh, one more. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it means I don't care. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, you, you, I don't say I don't care. Uh, often for application, you would need something which a dependency which is a polynomial in the other parameters for application, because. Uh, your things will vary, and if, for instance, if you have exponential uh, dependency, it may spoil uh, some part of some argument. But uh, yeah. why do you return S to the last? 
Uh, no, okay. I said you can look just at s equal one half up to changing the L function. Um, the, uh, just if I look at my uh, Riemann zeta function, I can write it as one over n s. Okay, so here it's a bad example, uh, but I can uh, I can also write it as a sum over n. Uh, S plus I T, and uh, then I will uh, I will have uh, here some coefficient, uh, a n of t, where a n of t is uh, uh, n uh, to the power I T. So I may change my, so it's a different L function, and I have uh, shifted the parameter, and it's just a trick. It's uh, uh, you see, but sometimes it's. Uh, useful to, uh, especially if I want to emphasize the aspect when you evaluate an L function along the vertical line, it's better that you write the full, uh, uh, the two parameters, and, uh, but sometimes it's just to save a space and not to write a S and have it in mind. It's just, um, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, I, I am always along this, and uh, okay, and I focus on one half just sometime to fix ideas, and because with uh, normalization it's at one half where things count, but there are uh, situations where things count at s different from one half and possibly s very big. And uh, so, yeah. Oh, the S variable is uh, or maybe important in some situations. And, uh, okay. And uh, the first uh, example of a subconvex bound, uh, it's due to, uh, okay, it's complicated, but it's RD little wood and uh, Hermann Weil. And it's so often called weil bound, and it's, it says that if you look at the Riemann zeta function on the on the critical line, it is bounded by uh, by uh, okay one plus t to the power uh, one six plus little o of one. Okay, and so. In this case, this is 33% uh, of the uh, so-called Lindelof hypothesis. Uh, original Lindelof hypothesis was that you could replace with uh, one six with zero, okay, uh, instead of uh, one quarter. So, and uh, okay, and this this uh, story is a uh, bit complicated. So again, this is usually called uh, weil bound. Uh, so what happened is that Hermann Weil devised the technique uh, to, to bound the Riemann zeta function, but he was looking at the Riemann zeta function at one plus i t, and uh, then uh, R D Little Wood they invented what is called the approximate functional equation for the Riemann zeta function, and then they said uh, in a paper that using our approximate functional equation and uh, veil bound, which was designed for uh, then one, one gets this one six. And I am not even sure that they published the full derivation. So. Okay. Okay, so, um, yeah, okay. Okay, and so, or maybe, uh, yeah. Uh, 
And uh, in fact, this problem, uh, subconvexity problem, took uh, really uh, decades to really take off. Uh, because the uh, next case is, next case, I think, is, uh, is due to Burgess, and it's a case of Dirichlet function. Uh, so, uh, in the uh, first, in the uh, Q aspect, and uh, then, uh, then in uh, Q and S in both. So here there are two. Uh, in fact, I'm not sure Burgess did also this aspect. Okay, I don't. Uh, it, but so the uh, the first significant new case were the, for LKS Dirichlet L function of uh, of a Dirichlet character of a conductor Q. So and uh, uh, so, for instance, is bound of Burgess, and hopefully we will see it is what it was uh, bounded by Q to the one quarter, one minus one over four plus little o of one. So it's 25% of. Okay, and uh, so, and then it was in the 50s, uh, something like this, so, and, this, I think, was uh, in the 20s, between 21 and 27, uh, 19. I think Weil uh, result was from 21, and Hardy Littlewood, it came in 27, or so later. Uh, then for uh, modular forms, Uh, uh, it was done by Good, Anton Good, in the S aspect. Uh, it was done by uh, uh, Duke, Friedlander, Ivaniek in the in uh, the level aspect, QF aspect. Uh, uh, in some uh, QF aspect, and uh, yeah, and then uh, maybe all aspects. Uh, and uh, at least by myself and Ben Katesh in all aspects, but I won't claim uh, we were first. Uh, Okay, so, it, so and uh, so also uh, the rank, the case of rankin selberg l function, it was uh, done in many aspects when. Uh, Q is uh, when G is fixed and, uh, uh, and F varying. But uh, there is, uh, at the moment, there is a roadblock. Uh, so if F is varying and G is fixed, F and G go to go far away from one another. And uh, there is a kind of uh, uh, barrier. For instance, a big unsolved question, as far as I know, or maybe it's solved in some specific cases, is when f uh, equals g. Accepted in the S aspect.
Paul, si je suis correct, il est... Yeah, accepted for S. Uh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, sorry. Um, ah, yeah, I did not put a bar in the beginning. Okay. Um, and, uh, okay, and so for instance, this uh, work here, it was, uh, there have been an important uh, change of approach to the problem by Van Katesh. So this work of Van Katesh is what allowed to, to, to do this uh, case in full. Um, and, uh, and, and the, the most, I, okay, and there are other results, so there are uh, some, Results for standard L function. So L pi S for pi in GLD uh, uh, automorphic representation of GLD for D is bigger than three. So there have been, I will not detail the cases, but uh, there have been work by Munshi and his school and introduced the delta symbol method on that occasion. And uh, okay, and then there have been a, 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 a very important work by uh, Paul who proves many new cases in higher rank, and in particular, the uh, S aspect for any uh, D bigger than one. So in a sense, this is a kind of the ultimate generalization of the initial uh, bound of uh, Hardy, Littlewood, and Hermann Weil. For uh, uh, automorphic L function of uh, arbitrary degree. So, and, uh, okay, but the, the proof uh, come with, uh, so some ideas uh, coming from here, and then some uh, Uh, further ideas of Paul and uh, Venkatesh, and then uh, uh, I, further ideas of Paul uh, alone. And uh, uh, so maybe we will be able at least to, to point to which is uh, the, the direction of, uh, of uh, these achievements. Okay. Uh, Okay, so this is just a sub-convexity problem, and I uh, would just like to discuss uh, some kind of application to motivate it. Okay, maybe we'll do the most basic and then we will uh, have a break. So application sub-convexity problem. So uh, really the most basic one is, uh, is bounds for shorter sums. So it's really the, the most trivial one you can imagine. It's purely analytic, but so, so let's, uh, let's do it that way. Take the uh, smooth, compactly supported function in the interval one, two, 
And uh, I'm looking at the sum over n of my coefficient of my L function, V of n over n. Okay, so I am uh, trying to sum the coefficient of my Dirichlet series in uh, an interval of size uh, big N uh, for integers of size N. And so if you uh, say, for instance, assume the Ramanujan uh, Peterson uh, assumption, or if you, even if you just know uh, Rankin Selberg uh, uh, theory, then you can see that this is uh, bounded by n to the power 1 plus little o of 1, and maybe you can have q pi uh, 1 half uh, little o of 1. So you can, you can show something like this. Okay, so that the sum is bounded essentially by its length. So now uh, another way uh, to do this is uh, to do a contour shift and to rewrite this integral as your Dirichlet series times the Mellin transform of V times n to the s, ds. And here you are integrating along the, say, for instance, the vertical line, read part of s is equal to 3. So you can just uh, do this. It's a standard... Uh, Uh, standard uh, complex analysis. And then what you can do is you can uh, shift the line uh, real part of S equal 3 to real part of S equal 1 half. So you So you are, uh, okay, it's not free, but uh, let's say it's two. So you, you, are, you are integrating along this line, and uh, what you can do is that you can just shift the contour and apply a Cauchy formula. So here, okay, let's say you made some pole which would be located along this line, and what you you do the shift, and then what you get is that uh, your sum you're interested in is a, a sum of uh, residues uh, uh, of poles, so uh, residue of poles of, uh, so, This function, L pi S V tilde of S N to the S. So, and I recall you that the, the poles, they only come from this L function and they are all located on real part of S equal 1. So, this is something of size N or maybe N log N. So, it's, it's size of size N1 plus little o of 1. Okay but it's a, a clearly identified term of that size. And then you have the integral along this one half of the same thing. And uh, now you can use your convexity bound because this uh, Mellin transform is very rapidly decaying. So then this is bounded by Uh, okay, I will, uh, it will be Q pi one half, say one quarter minus eta, uh, plus little o of one, and then you will have n to the power one half, just by uh, bounding this integral here. So, Uh, what you have done is that you have written your favorite sum uh, as a main term which you can uh, compute uh, or you, you know how to evaluate and you have this error term which is bounded by this and then you see that the error term uh, 
term is uh, smaller than, uh, than say x little one plus little o of one if uh, by n sorry one plus little o of one if uh, n is sufficiently large if n is bigger than uh, q pi to the one half uh, maybe one half minus two eta plus something like this. Okay, so if mm, so if uh, if n is uh, sufficiently large, a bit bigger than uh, okay for any an eta is uh, what measures your capacity in solving the subconvexity problem in this uh, in this aspect. Okay. So what it says is that if you have a subconvex bound, you can uh, you you are able to evaluate accurately sums of your Dirichlet series for n small or at least uh, smaller than this uh, convexity range, which is the square root of the conductor. Okay, you can say what uh, good is it for? And uh, because, okay, it's just a quantity, and then you have an exponent one half and, and so on, so what, what for? So uh, uh, after the break, we will see number theoretic example where uh, this, uh, breaking this barrier, so putting, being able to put eta uh, strictly positive, have uh, arithmetic meaning. Okay? And of course, if you can uh, take, if you have the Lindelof hypothesis, Uh, then this you can replace it by, uh, uh, you can take eta equal one quarter, and so it means that n can be arbitrarily small in terms of the conductor of, uh, of your L function, and you can still evaluate accurately the, these very short sums. But, okay, but in a sense, we are just analytic here, and, and uh, after, uh, at 10, yeah, At 10, we, uh, oh no, but it's, yeah. it does not work. Yeah. At 11, at 11, we, we will give a, a meaningful examples. Okay.